Hey guys, welcome back to DCS World. I'm Spudknocker, as always. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to take a look at VKB's T-Rudder Mark IVs while also taking a look at using rudder pedals in the F-14 Tomcat. As many of you guys know, these pedals were donated to me by GOAT, the business guy behind the Fighter Pilot Podcast, and I have, am, of course, eternally grateful to him for sending those over. So I figured, why don't we go ahead and take these pedal through the pedals through their paces in the DCS module that requires rudder pedals more than any other, the F-14 Tomcat. I was inspired by some photos of the recent Kish Island Air Show and saw that Sajad uh, Vosul over on the ED forums had made some very cool Asia Minor liveries for F-14B. So welcome to Kish Island Airport and better, what better way is there to show off some rudder pedals than an F-14 TAC demo? We can see that we've got quite a crowd here on Kish Island to see our newly upgraded and re-engined F-14A Tomcat. Our new Russian AL-31F engines will give us a similar amount of thrust to an American F-14B Tomcat, and we are of course the star of the Kish Island Air Show. When it comes to the rudder pedals, the Mark IVs have far more pros than cons in my opinion. The construction of the pedal is fantastic to say the least. I have no doubts as to the longevity of the pedals due to their all metal construction. In fact, the only rubber and or uh, plastic parts I saw on the pedals were just coatings on wires. And coming from the Thrustmaster TFRP rudder pedals that are extremely toy-like, the VKB Mark IV blows them out of the water in almost every respect. So as we taxi out here, we can see the various aircraft that make the Iranian Air Force absolutely fascinating for any aviation historian or aviation geek like myself. And back to the rudder pedals, my grandfather always told me that as a pilot, professionalism is everything. Nothing shows off your professionalism in the cockpit more than ha how you handle the aircraft on the ground, and the Mark IVs can make you incredibly precise and make sure you keep that nose wheel right on the center line of your taxiways. And beyond just professionalism on the ground, rudder precision is certainly important and especially in a beast of a jet like the F-14 Tomcat that can be rather sensitive when it comes to rudder inputs and roll inputs at high AOA maneuvers. Well, as we taxi out here, here's a couple photos of the VKB Mark V's, showing off a couple different angles for you guys. Alrighty, we're coming up on the second area of the crowd. We can see there's some F5Es and MiG-21s over here. Interesting to note, the IRI AF does not fly the MiG-21, they fly the F-7, which is a Chinese copy of the MiG-21 F-13, which is a very interesting and different looking MiG-21 variant that looks very much like more sleeker and like a Coke bottle kind of shape um, that I think is much better looking, in my opinion, than a MiG-21 uh, BIS. And we can see I'm just dancing on the rudder pedals, making very precise and very smooth inputs that um, are very much possible with the Mark IVs that wouldn't be possible in my previous set of rudder, rudder pedals. It just makes for a, just a much better experience of taxiing the aircraft around on the ground, as well as, of course, uh, flying the aircraft in the air. Alrighty, so let's get lined up on the active, we'll get the canopy closed, we'll sweep the wings forward, and we'll perform another control wipeout to make sure our jet is good to go after its rather extensive overhaul uh, after coming out of storage for uh, more than a decade uh, and getting those new ALF, AF-31Fs in the jet. 
I totally butchered that. AL31Fs. There we go. Alrighty. And like I said, that gives us as much thrust as an American F-14B. So we'll be able to do some pretty fancy maneuvers here. And most of it in mill power. We've got the canopy down. We'll go ahead and bring the wings forward. There they go. And we see our jet is in the old-fashioned Asia Minor camouflage as a homage back to the Iran-Iraq War and when the F-14s were first delivered to Iran. So a nice control wipeout. Our jet looks like she's good to go. And the show box is ours. We'll go ahead and light the cans. Dancing on the pedals a little bit to keep us on the center line. And right, pulling up right into our first maneuver of the Kish Island Air Show, the Dirty Loop. Keeping our alignment over the runway with tiny rudder corrections as we pull up into the vertical. And as we bring her back on down to show center, we'll pull back on the throttle and clean her up. And we'll go ahead and head out over the water to set up for our next maneuver. And we'll take a look at some visiting Russian and Chinese warships near the uh, little harbor of Kish Island. Making sure we don't get too fast, as we don't want to break any windows or any eardrums in our crowd or over the city of Kish. In the F-14, you can be really surprised by how much and as well as how little you use the rudder. It takes practice to really find the sweet spot of when and where in the flight regimen you need to make use of your rudders to get the absolute maximum performance from the F-14. And we'll go ahead and manually pull our wings back and get ready for a high-speed pass over the crowd using our rudders to keep the nose on the horizon and not allow it to climb up to the right. This is re really where the fantastic precision of the heels on the ground design of the Mark IV uh, really comes into play. And a nice thump and jump scare onto the crowd. Yeehaw! Now there are two different tension settings for the pedals you can choose from. They are relatively easy to switch between, just requires a couple little tools. Of the two, I prefer the stock lighter tension for modern fighters and the heavier tension for World War II aircraft like the P-51. So we'll head out over the water and come around back towards a lineup on the runway for a uh, setup for our next maneuver and my favorite maneuver, the Cuban 8. Alrighty, so we're slinging our big fighter back around towards show center. And we'll go ahead and pull on up and show off the speed and climbing abilities of our newly re-engined F-14. And we're going to use the rudders to help us quickly roll her through 180 degrees for the second loop of the Cuban 8. There we go. Using the rudders to keep our alignment good. We kind of fell out a little bit on that loop, but let's see if we can redeem ourselves on the second loop here. Alright, coming back down. There we go. That's a good example of a quick, precise snap roll using a combination of stick and rudder forces in the F-14 Tomcat. Alrighty, so we'll set back, back up again over the ships for our next maneuver. 
using the rudder to gently roll her, roll her over as we fly out towards our setup area. Always making tiny, small rudder corrections to make sure we keep the nose where we want it to be in the F-14. And we'll use the rudders to just gently roll her again as we come on back over the ships. One of the rather large cons of the Mark IV uh, will be readily apparent to virtual World War II pilots for the obvious lack of tow brakes. There is a way to create virtual tow brakes using VKB's calibration software, but because the Mark IVs are so plug and play friendly, I have not yet messed with the software, and instead mapped the left and wheel brake to an unused hat switch on my HOTAS for Warbirds. Alrighty, coming in for a quick 720 degree roll. Coming right down the center line of the runway. Pretty good lineup. Alrighty, 360 and 720 not the best rolling maneuver in the world kind of fell out of it and flew over the crowd got a little dangerous there but uh i guess it works <laughs> Alrighty, time for a wing swept high speed photo pass right over the crowd like i said before the construction of the vkb mark fours is just fantastic the movement of the pedals up close looks rather fascinating to me, as everything appears to be engineered to be as smooth as possible with as little lubricant as possible, which is a huge, huge plus for ease of maintenance while retaining a high amount of precision. Alrighty, here we go, getting ready for the high speed photo pass, we're going to manually sweep our wings back. And this is where we need a lot of rudder correction, as she likes to buck around with the wings swept out of the uh, flight computer's schedule. At low speed with the wings swept, you're definitely going to be want to be dancing on those rudder pedals quite a bit, especially in low speed, low altitude turns. Alright, here we go, coming down low, ready for a nice banana route around the crowd so that they can take pictures of the top side of our F-14 Tomcat. Right around the crowd, absolutely perfect. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and climb on back up and set up for a low speed wings forward photo pass. And like I said earlier, but I just want to emphasize, the longevity's, longevity of these pedals shouldn't be an issue or a worry for anyone due to the rugged and low maintenance design. But another small issue is the rather small size and weight of the pedals. Uh, do mean that on a carpet carpeted area, the pedals can slip and slide out of place. This is partially mitigated by the fact that your heels are sitting on the pedal structure. However, it can still be a problem. And if you get up from your uh, flight position, you know you pause it, need to go get a drink or take a leak, your pedals may have moved slightly out of alignment, and you may need to move them back to where you want them to be uh, for your flying session. This is in contrast to like a much larger and heavier uh, pedal like the Thrustmaster TPR pedals, which probably don't have as much of an issue with that due to their very heavy and solid nature. Alrighty, so coming up for a slow speed photo pass, doing another banana route around the crowd here. Gonna take a lot of rudders here to keep our nose up, pointed at the horizon rather than digging down into the dirt. Alright, so perfect. A really nice banana route around the crowd there. Letting them take nice good pictures. And into a full mill, max sustain turn, right around. Gonna fly right back over the crowd. So pulling. Not a ton of rudder in this maneuver. We actually want to keep the, the nose buried down towards the ground in that maneuver. So flying right over the crowd making a lot of noise, going in to lighten the burners to make some even more noise for the crowd. 
as I was saying, for someone who travels and moves around a lot, the compact size is definitely welcome and definitely makes up for the fact that sometimes the pedals can slip out of alignment uh, on you. The heel pads where your heels rest on the pedal frame are adjustable to different lengths of pull. I have relatively small feet and the out of the box largest setting works just fine for me. But if you're moving and need the extra space, uh, adjusting the length is easy and quick. Another added bonus is the pedals require very minimal assembly out of the box. The only required assembly is affixing these two top nuts. And I was up and running in, in less than 10 minutes thanks to the, to the very plug and play nature of these pedals. So we're going to go ahead and set up for a break over the runway as a nice goodbye to the crowd. Interestingly, the pedals came with the, a VKB black box, a USB hub in which you can plug other VKB peripherals and only take up one USB slot in the machine. This too is seemingly bulletproof with a uh, very durable metal construction that should last you a very good long time. So we've got the wings pulled back, hooked down, and we'll go ahead and pop some flares. Pumping out some flares as we pass over the crowd, making sure we're not over the crowd as we pop those flares or over anything potentially dangerous. And into the brake. So we'll pull back the throttle, put out the boards, and dirty up. On the Mark IVs, I do recommend wearing shoes, uh, as barefoot or socks only does not feel nearly as precise or comfortable, uh, but it's really nice to have a uh, shoe sole against the rounded surface of the pedal itself. Bare feet just really doesn't work too well. Uh, with socks, only socks similarly. Yeah, so I definitely do recommend wearing some shoes. I find that lighter shoes tend to work really well, uh, as the uh, touch of the pedals is rather uh, light um, and isn't nearly substantial like a real airplane's rudder pedal. So having a, a light shoe that you can really feel uh, what's happening uh, through the sole while still having that nice uh, uh, sole to uh, rest against the rounded edge of the pedal can really, really help. All right, so we'll come around into our base leg, coming in towards the runway. Runway 09 left. Not using much rudder in this turn, surprisingly. I thought I'd have to use more. But so far we have a really good lineup. He's flying very nicely. Alrighty, using just a little bit of rudder to dampen out just a tiny bit of Dutch roll. Nothing too bad this time though. Gonna get her line, relined back up. We kind of missed it a little bit on our base leg, but not anything that we couldn't uh, easily correct. Applying a very, very nice approach, and we're gonna go ahead and drop her right on the numbers and stop her right in front of the crowd. Alrighty, and time for the rudder dance. Keep her on the center line of the runway as much as possible. As we slow her on down. So, in summary, let's go over a list of pros and cons for VKB's T-Rudder Mark IVs. The pros? Very light, very small, really awesome in that respect. Very little assembly required out of the box. No software required. It's incredibly plug and play, very easy in that respect. The pedals themselves are incredibly precise in DCS world, and I wonder if that has something to do with the fact that VKB says official rubber pedals of DCS world on the box. 
uh, affordable in terms of uh, high-end market rudder pedals and they feel really nice it, it just feels really good under your feet with some nice kind of lighter tennis shoes um, some cons uh, might be there's only two resistance settings there is no toe brakes might be a problem for you World War II guys uh, long wait times for customers similar to uh, Verpal when it comes to ordering uh, you know Eastern European flights and peripherals I say that as we pass the Russian Knights here obviously from Eastern Europe <laughs> kind of funny um, and shoes are required that may be a calm for some not really a con for me, uh, it's just part of the game. And in sum, I would really highly recommend VKB's T-Rudder Mark IVs uh, to any flight sim pilot for DCS or any flight sim, but you definitely need them for the F-14B. Having a nice pair of rudder pedals will really help you in your journey to taming the beast that is the DCS F-14 Tomcat and will probably even be more important for the F-14A uh, that is still to come. So, if you liked the video, please give us a like and a subscribe, and please consider supporting my channel on Patreon. All donations come back to you guys in the form of missions flown with the, on the Wingman Finder group, as well as awesome DCS video content here on YouTube. So we'll go ahead and ease her on into our parking spot where we started. I'm sure all of the crowd are taking lots of pictures, lots of foreign journalists seeing a Iranian F-14 up close. We'll get her stopped. And we'll start to get her shut down. Thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate your view, and I appreciate your donation on Patreon. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I, like I said, I can't recommend the VKB T-Rudder Mark IVs uh, enough. They are a fantastic uh, piece of equipment. Thanks a lot, guys. Fly safe and have fun.